We do reviews now. This is a review channel now. Welcome to the show. The Open House. The Open House is a Netflix original movie starring that kid from Goosebump and that other horror movie that was kinda... Yeah, he's he's got a good career ahead of him. Oh, and he was in 13 Reasons Why. But he's wondering 13 reasons why he shouldn't have made this movie. There's only one reason in it. Because it's not very good. Spoilers. Now before we get any further, I want to go ahead and say that this review is full of spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the movie, because it is on Netflix and anybody can watch it. If you have Netflix, that is. But who doesn't have Netflix at this point? Spoiler alert. Right here. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay. You can get spoiled now. The movie starts off with Logan attempting to run away from home again, but he gets lost and ends up right back where he started. Yeah, Logan is apparently sanic fast and everyone is super excited that he's gonna be an Olympian one day. It's almost enough for the Olympics. I bet you think that's some sort of foreshadowing. I bet you think that speed's gonna come in handy sometime later in this movie. I, Logan's gonna run fast later. It's not foreshadowing and, and he doesn't. Moving on. Apparently Logan's mom Naomi and his dad, whose name I can't be bothered to look up right now, are having financial issues. So Naomi sends them to get milk and eggs. Sure. Hey, get milk too, okay? Logan shows his dad his mixtape. <laughs> dad goes in, grabs eggs, forgets milk. Camera slowly zooms in on milk to really show how impactful to the overall story it is that he forgets that milk. What's that? The milk has literally nothing to do with the movie and we're zooming in on it for no reason? Okay. It's fine. I'm gonna stop doing that, I swear. The dad stumbles outside, gets hit by a car, Logan sees the whole thing and is probably traumatized for the rest of his life because of seeing it and probably needs some therapy. Flash forward a few months and the dad is dead, and Logan and his mom can't afford to live in their house anymore. The Logan's aunt offers to let them move into her super fancy mountain house in the middle of nowhere. She explains that while it's for sale, they can stay in it as long as they leave the house from 11 to 5 on Sundays for open house. Open house, everybody. It's, it's the name of the movie. It's called Open House. Naomi reluctantly agrees to go while Logan is mad he has to leave his school because apparently he's going to be an Olympian and his mom's like, nope, not an Olympian today. Today we're going to the mountains. It'll be fun. On their way to driving through the mountains, they almost hit a man standing in the middle of the road. Oh, now we on to something. The dad almost gets hit by a car. They almost hit someone with a car. Movies are all about foreshadowing. And this one's doing a great job, foreshadowing minor details throughout the whole thing. Right? Wrong. Okay, okay, but remember this scene, because this is one of two scenes in this entire movie that actually is kind of important. One of two. And at this point, we're about five minutes into the movie, so, you know, it's good. Now, over the next half hour, the movie introduces you to a cast of really sketchy townspeople. We have Marge, or... Martha, I can't remember which. You must be Logan. Oh, and hold on, Naomi. Marge is one of those people who stands uncomfortably close to you when they talk. Also, she tends to forget conversations she has with people. I lost my husband a few years back. My husband can't wait to meet the two of you. And wanders the wood in her pajamas at night. Do you need help? No. No. So you know, she's she's a keeper. 10 out of 10. Good old Marge, Martha. Mar Martha, Marge. Alright, then we have the two creepy realtors. One who is real over the top about Do not come back before 5 p.m. Do not come back here until after 5 because we do not want to upset any potential buyers. And the other is a really sketchy, nervous, shaky guy who seems nervous about literally anything you say to him. He's the kind of guy that's like, Hey, Kevin. And he's like, What? talking to me. It's like, yeah, Kevin, calm down. Last guy in our zany cast of characters is local shopkeep, Chris. Chris is a little 
forward flirting with Logan's mom, so Logan gets upset and doesn't like Chris through the rest of the movie, most of the movie. Almost rightfully so, though, because he acts really sketchy through most of it. He's just a sketchy guy, so, you know, he's not too wrong. Mostly. Mostly. We'll get to that in a minute. Alright, after the first day of open house is when stuff starts to get really interesting. Now, the main scary part of this movie, the actual horror part, is just someone or something doing random things in the house. It's a lot like paranormal activity in the fact that it's just something moving. Logan sits his phone down, comes back, phone is gone. Oh well, I must have lost it. Logan sits down his cereal bowl, finds it somewhere else. Oh well, I must be going completely crazy. Doors open and close without anyone being there. Must be the teenager acting out. Weird noises coming from the basement. Yes, probably the old pipes. Probably. But what if it's not? Another good portion of the movie is Naomi the mom walking down in the basement in her towel every time she runs out of hot water. Every time the pilot light switch is switched to the off position. Must be them pipes. Gotta be them old pipes switching the switch in a, in a circular motion. To the off position. The old pipes do that. Do pipes do that? It's, 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 it's worth a Google. Old pipes. Rust. I don't think it's the pipes. And most of the time, these things that are happening, our main characters don't even really notice too much or really recognize as weird. It's just us watching the movie that are like, something's going on. Something's happening. You, you, you should probably look into that. But they, don't, they just don't care. I'm going to skip over a few things here. But remember that the movie is an hour and 30 minutes long. Over an hour and 15 minutes of the movie is spent making us believe that something really weird is happening in the town. Um... We catch Chris stalking around the house. He goes into the basement and you never see him again until later in the movie where he says, Oh, I just didn't see you, so I thought I would leave without you knowing. Everyone in the town somewhat hints at having been at that house before, leaving everyone watching the movie wondering if there's something really about the house itself and nothing about just the people inside of it. Now that being said, the camera work in the movie is really good. I really enjoyed just the overall feel of the movie while watching it for the first time. I was, I, I thought it was a great movie. Um, the acting's really good. The soundtrack is really good. They've got some nice piano in there. It, it goes well with the scares. But in the end, nothing really has anything to do with anything. There's only two important scenes in this entire movie at 8 minutes when they almost run over that guy in the street and at 23 minutes when they show this guy's boots walking into the open house. Everything else is just completely done to throw you off. This part when the mom starts bleeding randomly from her nose. This part when Logan breaks a step and continues to have to step over the entire movie but no one ever trips over it. This part when the camera zooms into the milk over and over and over again. The part where the police don't care that someone breaks into the house and sets up a dinner for two. Some kids just did this? It's not uncommon. Okay, kids get bored. They do weird things. They were probably just trying to scare the newcomers. This part when Logan looks into this tunnel in the basement filled with wood. Seriously, this doesn't have a role in the movie at all. Like, nothing. <sighs> okay, this next part is where I ruined the entire movie. So if you haven't seen it and you still want to be somewhat surprised at the end, stop watching this about right now. All right, so I'm about to explain the entire last 10 minutes of the movie. And I'm not exaggerating. This is the last 10 minutes. Everything important in this movie happens in the last 15 minutes. The rest is completely, not even jump scares, just random things that happen for no reason. Anyway, Logan for some reason decides Chris is a cool guy and invites him over to help him watch over the house. Chris continues to act sketchy and ask sketchy questions. Well, it's just the two of you up here, huh? So within a few seconds of going to bed, Logan finds Chris with his throat cut in the car. Yes. Uh, Chris is actually just a nice dude, I guess. Chris! We, uh, <laughs> we didn't call that one right. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. My bad. Wow, that's great. Uh-huh. 
Oh yeah, and uh, Martha apparently has Alzheimer's. Uh, we find this out right near the end. Uh, so apparently her going around being crazy is just her going around being crazy. It really has nothing to do with anything. She misunderstands. She answers questions wrong just because she really can't answer them right. So it's nothing creepy. It's just life. Anyway, her killer knocks Logan's head into the car, pours cold water over him, freezing him to the ground. He goes upstairs and starts breaking Naomi's fingers which really came out of nowhere. This movie went from, like, no violence and nothing happening to breaking people's fingers and slicing people's throats. Nowhere did we know this was going to happen. It went from no violence to, like, super violent so fast. Logan wakes up. He's frozen, grabs a knife. Some chase scenes happen. They end up in the basement. The basement! I knew it had something to do with the basement. It was a creepy tunnel. Does he live down there? Is he behind the giant closed off pile of wood in the tunnel? Is it gonna open? Is there gonna be a cool passageway behind that? The answer is no. The basement is just how they left it. No one trips on the broken stair. Logan accidentally stabs his mom as he's coming around the corner, but it literally makes no difference because the killer is standing right behind her, waiting to kill them both anyway. But they make it seem very tragic as if Logan has ruined everything at this point. But it really made no difference because like he was right there like sorry but he was already broke her fingers could have stabbed her she tells him to run logan runs upstairs the killer takes logan's contacts out (laughs) okay yeah let me repeat that one yes the killer takes logan's contacts out I guess something I failed to mention is that Logan doesn't have good eyesight. They played this by the fact that he wore glasses and put on contacts in the movie. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, now you know, just as well as I know. The killer takes Logan's contacts out, tells him to run away. So now Logan can't see. He's been frozen, so he can't use his Olympic speed to run away. He runs to the woods. Accidentally hides from Crazy Martha, falls asleep, wakes up the next morning, and gets killed by the killer. That's it. That's the movie. That's the open house. Netflix original movie. In the end, we see the killer pulling up to another open house somewhere else in the world. So apparently that's what this guy does. He goes from open house to open house, killing anyone who happens to be staying at the open house. But what does the milk mean? It means nothing. But what about but what about the creepy townsfolk and the random nosebleeds and the disappearing man and the broken step? None of it amounts to anything. Guy was in their house, randomly killed them one night. He he went from moving their coffee cup to across the hall to, I'm going to break your fingers tonight. Within about 24 hours, people just snap like that. Why did Chris creepily walk into the basement? Why were the realtors so nervous? Just because, apparently. Because the director wanted you to be thrown off. But when you do stuff for no reason, it really doesn't make, it just makes you angry. It doesn't make any sense. The Open House was a great movie up until the last 10 minutes when they decided, oh, none of anything you just watched really mattered. You spend over an hour speculating going, oh, I bet I know what's going to happen, but then actually nothing happens and ultimately it all comes down to nothing. Everyone in the movie basically dies, except for Martha, she's still wandering the woods apparently. And doesn't get affected by cold. Some people might enjoy this twist because it played on the fact that nothing happened and people will go, oh, haha, it was just a guy. But they really don't make it seem like an intentional twist. It just all comes crashing down in a matter of minutes. It could be that the director wanted to make these cliches up and make you think that he was thinking something interesting, but it really just comes off as unplanned. It's fine to throw the audience off once in a while, but to make the entire movie you just watched completely irrelevant by the last 10 minutes. It's just a slap to the face for the people watching. I wanted to like this movie so bad. The score was good. The camera work was great. But in the end, if the milk means nothing, 
The movie means nothing to me. Sorry, Netflix. This one's no good. If you like this review, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Um, this is actually my first one. I've never done one of these before. I can tell. Well, thanks. Thanks, pal. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. And you can actually see me live every weeknight on twitch.tv slash Google. I play games on there. I do all sorts of things. Thanks for watching.